Hello my soccer universe. Four days of watching tournament knockout soccer in a day is taking a little bit of toll on me. I feel kind of really really tired but then with the bright early mornings, ah uh, yeah, it's not easy. However, the round of 16 is in the books. We didn't get really great games yesterday, however, we got at least one no, actually we got two historic results, um, and yeah, I saw it in the headline. England breaks their German curse uh, 55 years after beating them at Wembley in the World Cup final. They can win against Germany again. Uh, in a typically knockout game, that's the type of game that you would expect, um, not what we saw the day before. I mean, that was just... I'm still not quite <laughs> over that. I just wish that the atmosphere at those two games was as electric at the end as it was at Wembley. <laughs> However, also gotta say, cap ca caveat, I'm all for, you know, celebrating and supporting your team, but the booing of the national anthem, this is for me a no-go. This is the lowest as it can be. You might not like the Germans, and they are, you might see them as your eternal rival or whatever. You just don't do that. And at that point, I definitely was more for England in that game, because I actually think it will be good if England makes a deeper run. Uh, and I think they have the better squad. Um, however, that kind of, you know, Tilted the needle from going England a little bit more to the neutral position, uh, almost instantly. It, it 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 was just in many ways tone deaf, and then also when the players were kneeling, um, no, uh, I do not get that. I really do not get that. And yes, I Austria was horrible for booing national anthems until in the mid nineties they made this an absolute. Um, no, do not do that. So that was actually for me the one sour point of the entire eve evening, right? At the, at, the, at the beginning when I was really, you know, I, I was said, this is Wembley. This is how Wembley should be. And uh, yes, it's not the old Wembley, but this is still Wembley. Uh, it's an amazing atmosphere. And then my kids and my wife hear uh, the English booing the national anthem. So I... I just wanted to say this up front. The other game, uh, was it better than? I mean, it didn't have the atmosphere, but in some ways it was, I think, a little bit more um, entertaining because there were more goal scenes, but then in the end, I think everyone was falling over themselves. And, but it ended at least with a bang. But of course, you know, the attention was so much on England, Germany, that it, it really could not have... Um, lift up to that. So let's talk England-Germany. Uh, in my favorite white against black matchup, I know mean, it's not hockey where white against black is really bad, but I still am not, you know, I do not like monocolored matchups. Then at least then give me some color, but the white against black just doesn't look right, and I know they didn't have any other chance. I think if uh, England would have played in blue against Germany, white would also not have looked right. So, uh, I gotta say that too. Um, very defensive setup from England, uh, and I'm ac actually laughing at it. I mean, we have Italy playing uh, now expansive football, and England is taking the Italian route uh, by really being tight on the back, and they do this quite effectively. Um, I also still maintain that I think part of that is that uh, Southgate is very well aware that his squad is generally overplayed, so let's take a little bit the easier route through the tournament by sitting back and save ourselves a little bit. And he could do this against Germany, who uh, surprisingly played Werner up front. Um, also, Goretzka came into the midfield, which, yeah, and Kimmich is on the outside. The German lineup never really made sense to me in many ways. Uh, but, you know, it was... You could do this against a German team because, uh, let's face it, although there are really talented players up there, and I actually rate this squad, 
uh, quite highly. It is not the, bad, the German team that we all know and fear. Uh, they're definitely in kind of they're still in this transition period from the big generation that went to the World Cup, that won the World Cup, that then went to the semifinals five years ago and then crashed down. And you know it's a rebuilding job, so it will take some time. Um, and the game was tight, and it was not very exciting. I mean the. First one was, and I have to say, this is where, you know, when you see the red card for the Licht, uh, we had suddenly Goretzka plowing through and Declan Rice taking him down. However, he had the backup with uh, Maguire uh, as well being there. So uh, there was, although he took him down and uh, if he doesn't take him down, uh, Goretzka is probably through on goal. It's not a red card. It is as simple as that. You have to defend as a team. And this is what England did very, 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 very well. I think the first big chance came from a shot from Sterling where Neuer had to extend himself a little bit. Then Werner on the other side had actually a pretty good chance where, um, you know, I mean, it, 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 it was a safe, but I, I, I think it didn't lift the ball high in, enough. I mean, that could, could have been goal. And then just before halftime, uh, Thomas Müller, who probably had one of his worst games uh, for German, Germany, uh, loses the ball to Sterling, who uh, attracts many German players. Suddenly Kane is free, the ball goes through, but he makes it too heavy of a touch to go past Neuer and then almost can clear it. But that was a huge uh, chance right before the half. Second half, uh, I think as far as I, I, I remember, that the next big chance actually fell to Germany with a Kai Havertz shot that was really well saved by Pickford. Although, the, if I look at the replay, I'm still not sure if that shot wouldn't have gone towards the crossbar. But, you know, safe is a safe. And while I look uh, at Pickford as probably being the wing link in this England squad, especially when I compare him to a, a goalkeeping giant like Neuer, He's doing it quite well. And, you know, if you have the solid backline with Walker, Maguire and Stones uh, and then very well protected by Rice and Phillips, honestly, um, you can shine. You need to make maybe one or two saves per game and you just need to be there for that. But other than that, you can play it rather safe. Um, I think the game then definitely changed when uh, Grealish came on. That was the substitution I think uh, everyone was way waiting for. Saka came off. And Grealish almost immediately had had an Im 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 impact in the 75th minute. And, you know, the, the game really was going towards a stalemate in, in, in a way. I mean, the German Concord had tried, tried to talk it up and say, there's such a tension, there's not much happening, but there's such a tension there that you feel something's going to happen soon. Uh, yes, but it was not really there. I thought this game was straight headed for extra time, um, which it did not. It did not because, uh, as, as, as I said, uh, ball comes to Kane, who plays it back to Grealish, who plays it outside to Shaw, crosses in, and Sterling taps it in. And at that point, Inge has scored only three goals in four games, and Sterling scored all, all three, and he's the star of this team. And um, credit to South for, to, to South for pull, 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 pulling him in. And then I think, uh, you know, big celebrations Every, everywhere. Everyone thought, yeah, now we need to just hang on. And then the big chance that fell to Thomas Müller, where he runs straight on goal. I think he does everything right. He has decided where to pull it. He got the goalkeeper in the wrong corner. He just puts it wide. And I heard this morning, and I actually am willing to agree, this is not a Thomas Müller situation. Thomas Müller is not used to running straight, straight, straight and goal. Uh, he usually tries to, uh, you know, hurl it over, over the line, stumble it over the line. This, this, this is a Thomas Müller goal. It's not, or, you know, that he is the receiver of the last pass, but him running in, uh, alone to goal, uh, I think um, you don't see that. You really don't see that. So uh, I think Rafa Honigstein said he watches Bayern and I think he cannot remember a single time that Thomas Thomas Müller was running free on goal. This is not his play. So uh, he was not prepared for that in many ways. And this is a once in a lifetime thing. Of course, I mean, it's a bad miss. I mean, when you look, look at it, that he takes the shot and you think this is going in. And if you look at it in replay, you, you really see there is the left from his side. The left corner is free. 
It just needs to put it there and it goes wide. I mean, I even think it, uh, that it was the right thing to take a shot that early and not go further towards Pickford and do what Daniel Malen did. No, he did the right thing. He took the shot. It just uh, went wide. And so England could uh, seal the deal a little bit later when Grealish uh, presents the ball on the platter to Harry Kane, who up until this point, yes, he had one chance uh, at the end of the first half, but I really was thinking, um, England is playing more or less with 10 men because Harry Kane is not doing anything. Just stand, standing around. But you know, that's what good strikers do. They stand around, the ball is served to him on a platter and he puts it in, into the net. And from the celebration that followed, the celebrations that followed also in the stands afterwards, everyone knew that was that. And England, I said it before, after 55 years, beat Germany in a knockout game, beat Germany at Wembley in a competitive game. Uh, I think there was only, I think in the 70s, a friendly, but other than that, they had an abysmal record, record against Germany at Wembley. So that curse is over. And as we know, the bracket looking now very favorable to England to go somewhere. I mean, there is no big name in there. However, that might be deceiving. I actually thought that Sweden could give England some trouble. However, Sweden had to play Ukraine and in a position that Sweden doesn't like, being the favorite, needing to win, needing to do something for the game. And you could see uh, it's not what they like. Yes, I think they were, especially in the regulation, overall the better team. However, uh, Ukraine... And I was surprised that Malinowski was not playing, but they did some pretty good stuff and they used uh, Sinchenko almost, you know, always a li little spurts, but they used him very, 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 very well. And then if you see the first goal where Yarmolenko, a wonderful, I think with the outside of his foot pass, curls right at Sinchenko, who can want to uh, time it into the net. Yes, he took a deflection uh, from Olsen, but that was really, really well done. Um, and at that point in Ukraine, and it, it happens so often that once a team scores um, a little bit, all of them, suddenly they get this boost and you think maybe there could be a second coming. But then uh, within 10 minutes or so, Sweden has settled the game and then Forsberg takes a shot, also deflected, uh, and goes into it. It's 1-1. Um, and probably fair. The only fear was that maybe the equalizer came too soon so that the teams could hang back in the second half. However, the second half was not that boring overall uh, because we had quite some action with, um, I think, the Ukraine hitting the World Wood Grounds and then Forsberg, I think, twice. And one shot, it really nicely landed just where the post come, comes out, the other one on, on the crossbar. That is where Sweden could, 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 could have won it. Sweden, so the game goes to overtime. Sweden loses, in my opinion, the game uh, on the red card for Dan Danielson, who uh, ugly foul. Yes, it was not on purpose, but the way he has the foot high, he, with this challenge, he takes into account with the foot that high that he might hit someone, and I'm not sure uh, if that player is going to play the next game. So, uh, not very well. And... That actually started then the sequence where I had the feeling like every two minutes a player is lying on the ground. I think uh, Berg came, came on, he was hit uh, with a knee on the head, was lying. Then I think there was a Ukrainian player just, just in the box trying to lie and suddenly he can sprint again. Uh, it was not pretty and I thought, yeah, at least I'm going to get some excitement with the penalty sh sh shooter. The excitement came otherwise when Sinchenko just plays a wonderful cross in and uh, Dovbig who just had come on, uh, who is a relative known name, heads it in for his first international goal and gives Ukraine a last second winner because Sweden did not have even a chance any anymore. And so, yeah, I think the game was overall, it was not as bad as I feared. I actually think it was even better than the England-Germany game. However, it did not have as much history riding on it. So, uh, and you know, the name Sweden-Ukraine is not the barnstormer in any way. So there you go, uh, we have Ukraine move moving on and I can only say bravo Austria, bravo! Uh, it's, you know, I, I tell the story again, um, I think what Austria showed against Ukraine uh, for the first time and then against Italy, this is the Austria that I want to see and I think if Austria plays this way, 
uh, they can be really, really, really dangerous to many teams, uh, especially in Europe. However, having said that, I think after you demonstrated how well you can play against Ukraine, you should have used your head a little bit more and say, okay, maybe a draw is just enough to see Ukraine and Austria go through. And we look at the tournament uh, bracket. And if we have a third place, there is a chance that we play against Sweden and not against Italy or France, which were the other two options. More or less out there. Yes, instead of Sweden, you could have got Spain, but it is Sweden. That's a team that actually is within your grasp. And you could see with Ukraine, it was within the grasp. Also with the big break. I mean, there were so many things. Well done, Austria. A team like Ukraine that is inferior to you can move further because, yes, uh, they lost and probably this was a little bit of risk. They were uh, more or less halfway on the play at home. They were the last ones to qualify but they made it through. I'm actually very happy for Shevchenko. Uh, you know, Milofen, I'm not gonna say any bad thing about Shevchenko. So very happy for him there. So yeah, we have uh, the eight results. Uh, the most emphatic, of course, being Denmark. We had uh, four overtime games. We had one panel, pan pan shootout. I think the only real stinker in there was Belgium against Portugal and to a certain degree England, Germany. But other than that, I think we had really, really good games uh, in this round. So yeah, it was a fun round. The bracket now sets up as follows. Again, the, uh, we have four big, big names in there. If you can't bail, I'm still, Belgium is kind of, kind of so-and-so, but you know, keep giving the talent, Belgium was a favorite. So we have Belgium, Italy, Spain, and England in there, but they're not evenly distributed. We have, uh, of course, the first three in the upper half of the bracket with only Switzerland in there, who slayed the French dragon. And down, England is now playing Ukraine, and then the winner of the Czech Republic against Denmark. I mean, this seems very doable for a path to the final, and my expected bracket says as much. Um, Belgium as the strongest team is still the strongest rated team. I'm not necessarily saying the strongest team. And at the moment I even hear that the book is favor Italy over Belgium. But you know, FIFA and ELO rating do not. So I have Belgium going all the way to final and England actually to win it with that route. Um, as for overall chances, yes, England is number one, Belgium two. Yesterday I didn't update the Spain rating, so uh, Spain is ahead of Italy now. Uh, and Denmark falls to fifth spot. Uh, Switzerland, Czech Republic and Ukraine make up the rounds. And I want to point to you, I sorted the eliminated teams of, you know, uh, how they are eliminated by round and then I actually sorted them by how many points they got uh, during the tournament. And what I see is that for the first time in history, and now this is a true well done Austria, you finish ahead of Germany. I don't want to say Austria played North Macedonia, the Netherlands, Ukraine and Italy. Germany had to play Hungary, France, Portugal and England. So slightly differently. Also, for and I forgot to say the, uh, all, um, before, I think this elimination for Germany is not as shameful as the last one because of these opponents. Uh, you could have made it through. But in the end, you lost out to better teams, and I think you cannot be sorry about that. And so it continues on Friday. Switzerland, Spain, Belgium, Italy. And then on Saturday, uh, Czech Republic against Denmark and Ukraine against England. I have to say I'm more excited for the uh, Friday matchups than for the Saturday matchups. But, you know, Denmark. I'm looking forward to Denmark, although there will be not too many fans there. In any case, please let, let me know what you thought about yesterday's games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.